Isn't this wonderful? Hello and welcome to That Deacon on YouTube. Well, as you can see, I'm outdoors. And I'm at a place I used to come to uh, when I lived maybe about a block and a half to two blocks away. I would come here to recharge my batteries when I was in seminary and working at the same time. And this place uh, was, for me, the place to connect with nature to visit beauty, to go a little bit inward, and to allow nature to truly uh, give me a boost. So without further ado, I'm going to take you inside and share this location for a little walk and talk on That Deacon on YouTube. Okay, you can see that I'm making my way to the entrance. Uh, I happen to be a member here, and so I didn't have to go to the admission booth. And once inside, I'll tell you where I'm at. I think you can see where we are in the distance and yes you are correct some of you might know this you are at the Huntington Library in San Marino California for those of you who don't know um, you might think this library was added after uh, Huntington died, but no, this was built while he still lived here to house his immense uh, collection. Now, typically, when this area is open, they have a bunch of tables and chairs, and it's set up like a veranda, as it is. So when I lived not far from here, I had such a dainty little small studio back house where I lived, when visitors would come, I would say, oh, let's go sit out at the veranda. I absolutely love this space, uh, which is the back part of the mansion here as I walk around. So you could exit here. And then look out at the expansive view, which is very reminiscent of an English garden. Not only was Henry Huntington interested in 18th century portraiture, he would also plan his garden to be like one of those gardens which looked natural but was completely curated. I mean really, as you walk around this area and you look around I mean, how can you not be appreciative and in wonder of, of the diversity found in creation? It is just magnificent. And here we are at the entrance to the Japanese garden. Before we get to the garden, I thought I would share some facts uh, about the garden. 
The garden was actually here when Henry Huntington owned the property and was living here, um, which means that this garden is now over a hundred years old. It is fully matured. Now, the tea house that's there was actually a restaurant in Pasadena. Uh, the house was built, I believe, in the 17th century, and Huntington bought it and then took it apart piece by piece until uh, he was able to reconstruct it and it is here. So it is an actual a tea house or little home uh, from Japan. Now the interesting thing about this way to the tea house is you notice that the steps are not straight. They're kind of off kilter. Uh, that is a Buddhist way of tricking evil spirits, which will prevent them from entering the space. Crafty, aren't they? Unfortunately, the tea house is closed up at the moment. That's too bad. But it is a rather large building. And of course, on this little hill, this overlooks this wonderful garden. This garden also means a lot to me personally because my future husband and I came here. He had never been. Uh, I brought him here on our very first date. What you can do here is take this little road just above the Japanese garden, which leads you to the Chinese garden, open in 2008. Um, so it's not as lush. It's still a work in progress. And here's the view you get when you enter this expansive lake and bridges. But you can just get a sense that it's still in its infancy. One thing I didn't tell you was that in early August, I believe August 9, I had my second cataract surgery. Surgery went on without a hitch, did my eye drops, and my doctor was very excited. He has done thousands of cataract surgeries and and after he finished my exam he got very excited and says ah now you have balanced vision and I said to him well that's the difference between a job 
in a vocation. Couldn't help myself. Always doing ministry, even with my eye surgeon. <laughs> this is an area I've never been. It must have, they're always adding things here. But you can see why coming to a place like this feeds the spirit. Sometimes more so than sitting in a building having words thrown at you. So now I think it's time to sit under a tree and share with you some of the ideas I have for this month's or this year's season of That Deacon on YouTube. So what I would like to do is uh, go and visit deacons at the churches where they are serving. And then they can give us a tour of their church where they serve and share their ministry that they are involved with at that particular parish. I wanted to do this last year and I couldn't because of COVID. And it looks like as the months progress, I might be able to do it this year. I would like to have more interviews. Uh, we have now in the Diocese of Los Angeles, a new archdeacon who is actually a deacon. That's one good thing about Los Angeles, as far back as 2000 something, uh, our bishops started to actually have a deacon as archdeacon. So uh, we got a new one, our former archdeacon retired and uh, is living wonderfully with her priest husband and seem very happy. And now we have a new one. So I would like to sit down with uh, Archdeacon Laura and um, chat about uh, the diaconate with her. So that's another idea. Uh, in October, we have a deacon gathering once again. Uh, we haven't been able to meet as a group for over a year and I may bring my camera there, especially because we have four new deacons uh, that were, will be ordained uh, this month. And uh, I would like to uh, chat with them and introduce them to you. I think I did that at a deacon gathering before, so uh, I will try to do that. I'm very close to starting and getting ready to premiere what I have called The Flow. I've started uh, my first, uh, the script, which will be the template for future episodes. So I'm just about ready to start that. Of course, that channel will be an adjunct one to this. Um, it will be on the channel where I did Compline, and I will change that title to The Flow. I will also create a new Facebook page called The Flow where people can uh, connect with me. It will feature uh, weekly episodes of The Flow uh, promoting contemplative prayer as a Christian practice. It won't be worship. It'll be looking at our faith as practice. And then uh, I can post that taken on YouTube videos there. I can also uh, each week um, repost the Compline and I may include thoughtful walking questions uh, that I had done over the years in hopes that if people take walks they can use that material as well. So there are a lot of good things happening this year. That's all I have. Uh, I hope you are well. I hope you are all getting your shots. Uh, I hope you're getting both shots. Uh, please, please be kind to people. One of the reasons that uh, retail and restaurant employees are quitting is because those of us who are customers are absolutely hellish to deal with. Remember to be nice because that's what we are born to do, to treat others with respect and kindness. Until next time, 
God bless, take care, and see you again on That Deacon on YouTube. Bye-bye.